Jana, you you also studied Turing for years. W can you tell us more about him than what we get yeah. to see in this movie? Turing really um, became a very influential mathematician uh, a few years earlier, a very young uh, Cambridge um, student and studying mathematics. And he did something that was absolutely tremendous with Gödel, who you mentioned earlier in the introduction. They, not working together, but their work when when built together basically shows that there are facts that can never be proven to be true in mathematics. Um, this is this is prior to the code breaking work, but it, it leads to the code breaking. So so it's it was a call um, amongst mathematicians, you know, after World War One and the devastation of World War One, people uh, a lot of intellectuals really clung to math and science as a way of sort of transcending nationalism and, um, and the arrogance that they felt got them into these terrible political troubles. And, and the beauty of mathematics was that everything was knowable. And here come these two mathematicians who realize something absolutely huge, and they prove that there are facts that can never be proven. They prove that there are facts that can never be proven. It's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Um, there are relationships among numbers that we will just never know. And, and, and they prove that there are some numbers that every digit that follows is basically a toss of the coin. They're numbers about which we will never know anything. And this really shook mathematics, but it's, it's crucial to what comes next in the entire history of math and science. They basically prove that there is no theory of everything for mathematics is another way of saying it. So he's this very young guy. The work is so obscure and so difficult. It's not like he becomes internationally famous overnight, <laughs> right? It takes people struggle to understand the theorems, but they're now considered some of the most important um, ideas from the last century. But while he's doing this work, he's imagining mechanizing thought. He's imagining what it means to prove something. And while he's thinking about mechanizing thought, he starts to imagine a machine. He imagines something like a typewriter. And this machine would read tape. Maybe the tape would have code and zeros and ones. And, and it would process thoughts. It would compute things. Like people were called computers. Computers were people before this. And what he does is he imagines an electromechanical machine that replaces the human computer what we now think of as the computer. He invents the computer is what happens. He invents the, the idea that there is one machine that would be able to do all of the sort of mathematical tasks conceivable. And he begins to make this leap. Not only could you make a machine that thinks a kind of artificial intelligence, but that we're machines that think, right? So he makes this leap that, that we're just biological machines. And all of this starts with this young guy all of this before he even um, enters the, the, the war effort.